Hello, welcome to our tour of the Community for Resources, Community Resources for Science webinar. Um, we're going to go over our homepage today. I'm Corinne Brown, the Teacher Member Services Manager, and I wanted to show you some of the resources available for educators. We'll start here on the homepage just to let you know a little bit more about our organization as a whole. The About CRS section has information about our mission and history. Programs and Services section has information about all our different program areas. We'll get to the For Educators tab a little bit later. The For Volunteers is for our scientist volunteers who do lessons in East Bay classrooms. The For Science Providers section has information for science museums and environmental education centers and other informal science educators on how they can connect with the network of science education schools in the East Bay. The Get Involved section is a call to um, action. Either join our network by giving your time or perhaps your money. So we'll go back to the For Educators section. I'll click on that. And you'll see the first page, which gives a rundown of all of our different services. But for this tour, Tour, we're going to be looking at this left-hand navigation section, and we'll go through the sections one by one. The first section is our science teaching tools, and when you click on that, it goes to this beginning page, which lists all of our different tools. And the first one is the science resource database. Search the CRS database. You can find it here on the science teaching tools page in the left-hand navigation, and also at the top of every single CRS web page. So we'll click on it, and you'll get to the login page for the database. Um, this is so that you can go ahead and search our resources. We provide a generic login right here, a username and a password that is always there on that web page. You can use it, but then we don't know who you are searching the database, which is fine, but there's some extra services that if you are a CRS member, you can log in with your personal um, sign in. And then we'll know it's you making requests and you tracking your information. Today, I'll log in under my um, account. And you can see what pops up. There's some general information about what you can find. And we're going to go to the Find Resources tab. Here we have, at the bottom section, a section for kindergarten and first grade and second grade and um, some different themes and some time-sensitive um, information. But we're going to start in the kindergarten section. And you'll see down here there's a list of different resources sorted by strand and by type of resource. So there's programs and websites and materials available for each of the different strands. I'll click into the Earth Science Program strand. And you'll see a general description of what it is. But I'm going to click on the link. That's the important thing. And that takes you to a sample of um, the reports that we um, provide for you. This one for kindergarten earth sciences has assemblies. And further down in the report, it will have field trips and in-class programs. And the nice thing is, if you bookmark this report now, you can find it anytime you want, and you won't have to log into the database system. It'll just be available for you. Let's go back to that Find Resources section, and we're going to search for something more specific. Today, I'm putting in frogs is what I want to look for. And I'll hit um, Find Resource. And you'll see here, it comes up with there's 40 different resource types, four themes, some time sen sensitive, which is usually either a temporary exhibit or perhaps a um, professional development workshop. I'm going to click into the resource types to just find out what exactly it's pulling out. And it says there's seven education programs on frogs and eight websites and 25 different materials. Um, I'm just going to click on one down here, the Westward Frog resource. And it's going to show me again a description of the resource, but I'm going to click on the link to the actual resource, and that takes me right to their web page that I can explore. So let's go back to um, the, what else is available in the login section of the database. And here's log a request. It turns out I didn't find exactly what I wanted to while searching on my own. So I'm, going to, I'm a member, and I am going to make a request to CRS, and I want to know about field trips. They're about newts. And oh, I want to know about life cycles and just some 
adaptations that newts have, and I'm planning for spring. And then I'm going to submit the request, and this is what I will see. I'm going to see my request number. Wow, that means an email got sent to me, Corinne, um, and I or somebody else in the office is going to help find you information on field trips about newts. But in the meantime, the database has pulled out some ideas for you that you might want to check out that are about newts. And so you can click onto those and find out more. Then if you're curious to find out what else is going on with your other requests, you can go to this View Request tab. And there it will say, oh, look, this person made a request about earthquakes and newts and a volunteer program about electricity and food. And so you can see my newts one is there. And if I click on it, this is what comes up that, yes, um, Corinne Brown has submitted a request about newts, and if I want to add, or in this case Corinne, which is me, wants to add a comment about it after I've already made my request, I can think, oh, you know, I actually also want to know about um, frogs along with um, newts. So you can add information to your request that way. So let's go back to our main website. And the next section down, if you go down this left navigation, is the best practices and planning tools. There is a whole host of information on this page to support you in um, teaching science in the classroom. The first section is California Science Standards Connections, and it includes some common core stuff. But I wanted to give you an example of some of the resources that CRS has actually made themselves and put on the website. There's also links to other organizations here. But let's click on this art strands articulation for earth science. And this is a document we put together to show how um, earth science concepts start at kindergarten and move up through the grade levels. And so what's the level that um, you're, you should be thinking about at kindergarten versus first grade and then on up and how they interrelate. So there's one for each strand, and you can find them on that planning page. Here shows you the whole rest of that long page of resources, the science and inquiry te teaching techniques, planning and reflection worksheets. There's a whole bunch of different ways of looking at how to plan your lessons so that you can um, kind of keep, teach across the curriculum, technology instruction, assessment tools, and star science, re star testing resources down below. The next page down is our science treasure trove website. Here we have a long page that you can't see everything here. It has some of our favorite websites that we at CRS go back to time and time again. The National Science Teachers Association website is fabulous. So is How to Smile that has a whole bunch of um, tested demonstrations and activities in science. So check that out. You'll find some favorites there, I'm sure. Next, we're going to go to the um, science teaching literature page. And here we have put together a bunch of resources that you can use for finding books to use with your science lessons, or learning more about how to use science um, literature in your um, science teaching to make it more rich. And down below, we've put together a bunch of actual titles of books you may want to find and use, each sorted out by kindergarten and science strand, um, so that you can find something quickly. Next, we'll go down to our basis lesson plans. Our Bay Area scientists and schools, scientists volunteers, have put together these lessons and tested them in the classrooms. And we've put their lesson plans here so that even if you can't get a scientist in your classroom, you can do the lessons yourself. Um, next now we're going to go to the teacher membership services. So we work with teachers on a membership basis. And if you are a CRS member teacher, you can make a request anytime you want. You can either do it from the database that we showed you earlier. Or if you don't feel like logging in, which is fine, you can go to this form and put your name, your email address, and email address, and what you're looking for here. And when you press submit at the bottom, an email will go directly to me, Corinne, and I'll help find what you're looking for. Uh, you, if you don't want to fill out a form, go ahead and email me. That's fine. Give us a phone call. That's OK, too. Next down, in case you couldn't find the science resource database, you can go to it here also. And further down, we've got the science e-news blast. Every month, our members receive an email from me that has um, information on program deadlines and uh, 
grant deadlines and temporary exhibits and professional development workshops. And we also try to add some content into each newsletter. So in September, we did some connections, some literature connections and common core connections. Um, the month before, we were talking about um, the Mars uh, lander going up and robots on Mars. And you'll find lots more information there. This is a good place. If you can't find that email in your email inbox, Go to this page because it's all archived here. Our next page down is the CRS Field Trip for Teachers. We hold these events twice a year with another organization in the Bay Area. Recently, we've been to the East Bay Regional Park and the Hayward Shoreline Interpretive Center. Um, we go and have a nice um, time eating and chatting and finding out about the programs at one of those um, science education partners. Next down is the quarterly resource guide. Three times the, oops, I forgot, sorry. Um, on a field trip for teachers, you'll find a link. I'll go back to it. Here's a link to our event calendar. And if you click that, you will get to our event listings, and you can find out what's happening right now with CRS. Now we'll go to the science resource guides. Three times a year, we put together an extensive list of deadlines and programs and temporary exhibits. And we actually print it and send it out to our members so that they have it in their hands to be able to use. We've been doing it three times a year in print. We're probably going down to twice a year in print and once by email. But every month, we also update all the information in those science e-news blasts. But if you're looking for a past guide, they are here. And they get posted generally even before they hit teacher's mailboxes. This last section in our tour Oh, see, there's a sample of one of those resource guides. The last section of our tour is about our basis program. This is exclusively for members. We work with scientists to get them ready to go into East Bay classrooms to do hands-on science lessons. And if you're a member, you can come here to look about all the information about how the program works and what the expectations are in the classroom. And also, how do you get a scientist in the classroom? It's by invitation only. So look for those emails in your inbox. If you have any questions about CRS member services, you can go ahead and contact me, Corinne Brown, at crs at crscience.org, or give us a call in the office. Thank you.